Hello again everyone, my name is Louis Agurio. Welcome to the King Messiah Project. This is Lesson 8 of our 12-part Refuting Calvinism series. The title of this lesson is Monergism or Synergism. Before we continue, let's put the definition of both terms on the board. This is the definition of monergism. Monergism is the doctrine that the Holy Spirit is the only efficient agent in regeneration and that the human will possesses no inclination to holiness until regenerated and therefore cannot cooperate in regeneration. Reformed theology holds to monogism that God is the only efficient agent when it comes to regeneration and that God is the only one that dictates how a person can be saved and that the human being, all of mankind, has no say in the matter whatsoever. Synergism, on the other hand, is the doctrine that there are two efficient agents in regeneration, namely the human will and the divine spirit, which, in the strict sense of the term, cooperate. This theory accordingly holds that the soul has not lost in the fall all inclination toward holiness, nor all power to seek for it under the influence of ordinary motives. Now, how does God enter into a relationship with his people? Let's go back to the Old Testament and find out. Let's put Exodus chapter 24 verses 6 through 7 on the board and read it together. This is what it says. And Moses took half of the blood and put it in basins, and half of the blood he sprinkled on the altar. And he took the book of the covenant and read it in the audience of the people. And they said, All that the Lord had said will we do and be obedient. Here we have God making an offer to the children of Israel to have a relationship with him. The children of Israel heard God's offer and they freely chose to accept it. What I'm trying to say is this, God likens his relationship with his people as that of a marriage. Now let's think about this for a moment. What exactly is a marriage? A marriage is a relationship entered into based on mutual love, mutual consent, and mutual free will. Synergism, not monogism as Reformed theology would have you believe. God offered to have a relationship with the children of Israel. The children of Israel heard that offer. They freely accepted. I've been married to my wife for almost 15 years, and I could honestly say that neither one of us would ever claim that we needed to be talked into by the other to have a relationship. Now let's go to a few verses in the Old Testament to show that God likens his relationship with his people as that of a marriage. The first one I like to put up on the board is, on, is in Jeremiah chapter 31, verses 31 through 32. Let's read it together. This is what it says. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day, that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was an husband unto them, saith the Lord. Now, let's further prove that when God entered into a relationship with his people, he likened it to a marriage. Let's go back to the Old Testament and find out what happened when Israel broke its covenant relationship with the Almighty. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 8, put it on the board and read it together. This is what it says. And I saw when for all the causes whereby backsliding Israel committed adultery, I had put her away and given her a bill of divorce. Yet her treacherous sister Judah feared not but went and played the harlot also. Now as we can see in the Old Testament, God likened his relationship with his people as that of a marriage. Synergism. God was her husband and she was his wife. Now the New Testament is really no different. In the New Testament, Jesus likens his relationship with his people as that of a marriage. He is the bridegroom and the church is his bride. Let's take a look and see what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 22, verses 2 through 4. Let's put it on the board and read it together. This is what it says. 
The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king, which made a marriage for his son, and sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding, and they would not come. Notice it doesn't say that they could not come. It says that they would not come. Apparently, they refused to come. Again, he sent forth another servant, saying, Tell them which are bidden, Behold, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fatlings are killed, and all things are ready. Come unto the marriage. And as we can see, in Matthew 9.15, Jesus said, Can the children of the bride chamber mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken from them, and then shall they fast. A couple of more verses before I close. Revelation chapter 19, verse 9 says, Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And Ephesians 5.24 says, Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. So you see, brothers and sisters, unlike what Reformed theology teaches, it is up to you. God likens his relationship with his people as that of a marriage, a relationship entered into based on mutual love, mutual consent, and yes, mutual choice, choice, a word Calvinists despise, choose, another word reformers despise. It's up to you. God bless you all, and see you soon on the King Messiah Project. Is it written in the stars? I'll be for some time.